it is the 16th year after the second millennium, when a Russian expedition there, in the land of wonders and treasures, uncovered what had been hidden for more than 200 years in the Arctic, known today as the North Pole. Its discovery, or disclosure, in 2019, became an official announcement in a twisted form of a truth buried since medieval times. So the days passed. In the first year, after the two numbers became identical, the threads of the game began, and the new war on the land of the hidden islands returns again. For more than 2,000 years, people have known about the greatness and vastness of the earth on which we live. This truth was not obscured, except in the century of Satan. The maps of the First and Middle Ages and the maps of the previous two centuries revealed what they had hidden. al kharat and his pretenders faked it. The maps of a thousand years were in the form of a mosaic patch. Whoever was able to collect them would reshape the map of the world in its true form, from Al Idrisi's maps on the borders of the earth and beyond to Mercator's map of the four central islands and what is below them, history tells us something that was the hidden reason for two world wars and the overt reason today for the direction of the powers. The great continent of Antarctica, or as it is called today the North Pole, is the reality of Antarctica, the gigantic continent that is filled with clouds is taught in school and university curriculum books as a frozen patch in the Northern Ocean, meaning they teach students that the North Pole is water, frozen, forming a circular patch inside the ocean. But at the same time, it was stated in the special document at the Arctic Ocean Conference on May 27, 2008, which was held between the countries adjacent to the Pole, which are Canada, Denmark, Norway, Russia, and the United States of America, which stated the necessity of the cooperation of the five countries in mineral exploration, and oil, more clearly, the division of the legacies of the pole between the countries surrounding it. This document was based on exploratory trips to this continent in the 50s of the last century, which it described as a land fit for living. Part of its lands are covered with snow, while greenery covers the other part. These reports are approved today by the major countries and approved by government agencies, the environmental organization has described life in the Arctic as full of shrubs, herbs, and various plants. Herbivores also include carnivores, elk, musk ox, and reindeer, in addition to predatory animals such as snowy owls, arctic fox, grizzly bear, and polar wolf. On the other hand, we find in the maps for young people on volleyball that Google completely removed the Arctic continent and replaced it with dark water and clouds, and made Greenland a region covered with snow contrary to its reality. Here we notice a great contradiction between three official educational, governmental, and geological bodies. The educational authorities showed that the Arctic is just frozen water in which some different polar animals live. As for the government, it admitted that it is a large land covered with plants and animals, while the geology is completely hidden among the snow or under the seas, which prompts any free, intelligent human being to think. Are we not in the age of satellites, as they claim, and we have enough technological power? So why this conflict over that land? The simple answer is, there is no conflict, but rather, it is an old story known to the great powers, but it is forbidden to the public. Its truth has been falsified for 200 years and has been completely obliterated in the century of Satan in which we live now. So what is the truth of the North Pole? apart from the fake maps and deception of the media, and what was found in it that caused the conflict to ignite over it again. To understand the truth of the great land of Artek, we must first refer to the maps and books of the ancients. Islamic references suggest that Dulkarnain was the first to set foot on the land of Arktak, whose area today is estimated at 27 million square kilometers. There are studies that show that the prophet of God, Solomon, peace be upon him, sent his ships to those lands as well, but the first thread is in fact this land began in the Middle Ages. An ancient continent was known to the Viking peoples as the Continent of Treasures and the Garden of Eden. Their books and manuscripts preserved in the Vatican Library were mentioned as being among the first peoples to discover a new land in the north as a result of its expansions and conquests that began at the beginning of the 9th century, after it had lasted for a long time. Large parts of the world, all the way to Andalusia, but the land of the Arctic, to which they migrated from Finland, Norway, Denmark, and other Scandinavian countries, was for them the land of gold and wealth, the land of greenery, and a comfortable life. Which explains the secret of their collective disappearance without a trace at the end of the first millennium and the beginning of the second, according to the documents that were revealed by Angelo Fort, Richard Orme, 
and Frederick Peterson in the book The Viking Empire in 2005. Some Scandinavian narratives mention that when they arrived in the land of treasures, it was not a land without inhabitants, but rather there were peoples inhabiting its dense forests and giant trees in a meadow similar to the Garden of Eden, surmounted by surrounding mountains and sweet rivers, and diverse animals and prosperity, which humans marvel at and which bodies approve of. The Scandinavians' narratives became like folk tales among Europeans, as they told, over hundreds of years, about a wondrous land the likes of which had never been seen before. This aroused the curiosity of the kings of Hungary, the Portuguese, and the English until the end of time, reaching the century. In the 15th century AD, when the discovery of a giant land was officially announced in the era of King Henry VIII, it was called Newfoundland. It is now part of Canada and overlooks the North Pole. It is believed that it was the gateway to the New World. In the middle of the 16th century, a geographer known as Tractor dos Mercator was a geographer. A Flemish man worked on maps throughout his life, which lasted 822 years, and he introduced the Mercator projection system, which is a system based on inserting the circles of longitude and latitude within parallel and straight lines. He presented to the world the famous atlas, which was described with perfection and accuracy and even surpassed the Al Idrisi Atlas in describing the land known at that time and revealing what is hidden now in terms of cities and lands, and countries, and his maps are still considered among the most accurate maps of his time today. If you go to any scientific geographical body and mention the name of Mercator, the maps will be recognized immediately, but if you show his famous map of the North Pole in 1569, you will find denial and stammering. So what did he show in that map? This map is the same. One of the most important and interesting maps of Mercator, as it was officially recognized as the first definitive map of the North Pole in the world. To understand what is coming in this documentary, we must remind you of documents that we published two years ago from now. The North Pole, which they hide today from the whole world. Here is the report, the Great Mount Momia. It is a black rock located in the center of the Earth. It appeared on many maps in the Middle Ages and was described by geographer Gerardo Mercator in 1577. It has an area of 22 kilometers and is the reason why all compasses point to the north because it is a rock. Great magnetism with a great influence. What is interesting today is that all maps show the North Pole as a white land of turbulent seas. However, most of the old maps showed that there is a large mountain in the middle of four islands and rivers and this black rock was known in the past as Mount Meru or Mamero. Gerardo Mar described it on his journey to the north in a letter he wrote to Professor John Day, in which he said, In the middle of the four countries circular around the Black Rock, there is in the center Warrensesquai, and a great nation, drawing the waters of the four rivers to it, and dividing the center into four regions. The sea water was descending to the earth, as if it were being poured through a great tunnel. It is four degrees wide on each side of the pole, meaning eight degrees in total, interspersed with a bare black rock in the middle of the sea, with an area of 22 kilometers. Most likely, I think it is a great magnetic stone facing it in the sky, the North Star. The pointer of the compass was pointing towards it wherever it moved, and this means only one thing. What was mentioned in the books was true. Yes, it is true. He wrote this letter in the year 1577, and then he drew maps of this place. They clearly showed the four islands with Mount Meru in the middle. Add to that that air and sea navigation avoid passing next to or over the mountain due to its influence. This is a fact. Every air or sea navigator knows that the North Pole, or as it is also known as Arctica, was not merely a lifeless expanse of ice on ancient maps. In a map dating back to the year 1531, prepared by the geographer Lawrence Finney, it shows four large islands of varying areas around the center of the Earth, which can be likened to a system of four continents. It matches ancient Asian beliefs, as their books mentioned that there is a secret mountain called Momeru, or Shamisan Mountain. Then he drew another map in the year 1134 AD. In a map dating back to the year 1594, dating back to Alcarat Cornelius de Jose, it contains a system of four continents divided between them by waterways that meet in the center. In what looks like rock formations, in the same year, Bruce Plains of Susus drew his famous map, which shows the four continents around the center of the Earth at the pole, with the inner sea in the middle, connected to a sea window leading to it. 
There are also Japanese and Chinese maps that show the same thing, which appeared at different times in the second millennium with many other maps. What concerns us here is that these lands were a proven fact over a thousand years and were known to the ancients. But after that, they were removed from the maps and erased from popular consciousness. So what is the purpose of this? We notice from Mercator's letter to Professor John that he referred to four islands or continents. It is divided by the flowing sea into the basin of Mount Rubes, centered in the middle. This indicates that these four regions or islands surround the mountain in the form of the ancient Roman theater, in which the terraces are at the top and the theater is in the middle, at the bottom. This is what Mercator showed in his map. We notice water flowing from the top between those islands down to the mountain that forms a basin of flowing seawater. While we were researching Mercator's path to ensure the accuracy of the information, we found a published document dating back to the Holy Roman Empire in the 14th century BC on a book of which we have not found any trace today. It is called in ancient Latin Inventor Fortuna, which means fortunate discoveries. A thousand monastery monks were among the 4,000 knights who set out from England in 1360 to control the land of Greenland, the land overlooking the North Pole. But none of the knights returned, and they disappeared completely under mysterious circumstances. The priest, by order of the King of England, went to Norway and met its Christian king, who had in his possession an old map of the Viking peoples of his ancient ancestors, showing new lands in the north. He stayed in Norway for four years. He was a wise and intelligent man, so the King of Norway appointed him to his own court and brought him closer to him. In the end, they looked at that map of his ancient people. The lucky priest was able to discover the four pole islands, and then he wrote a book, Lucky Discoveries, in which he mentioned in detail what was there. He confirmed that two of those islands were inhabited. We can almost be certain that his banned book, Invento Fortuna, is now in the Great Vatican Library, especially in the Forbidden Area, which is still banned from the public until now. While we were searching for this book in the Oxford Library, it was said that it completely disappeared at the beginning of the 15th century. We believe that it was banned by the British King Edward III until the British Kingdom was able to control those lands. It seems, and God knows best, that this book was reviewed by both Mercator and his professor John Dee, and through it he was able to reach the four northern islands and draw the complete map of the North Pole. This explains the statement that appeared in the documentary that we showed you, that what was mentioned in the old books was true. Mercator then wrote a memorandum that was preserved in the British Oxford Library, in which he said that the discovery of the geography of the North Pole and its four islands dates back to the year 1364 by a priest who worked for the Norwegian king. He then mentioned in an incomprehensible sentence that the map was drawn by an English mathematician who went to those islands and whose knowledge was acquired by him, arts of magic, and then he said that whoever reaches Mount Momero or Rubis unfortunately cannot return. From the above, we find that the truth about the four islands in the Arctic was rediscovered in the middle of the 14th century because they were discovered by the Scandinavians at the beginning of the second millennium. In in-depth research, we found that the great Mount Momir was also described in the texts of Ptolemy in the first and second centuries AD, which indicates to us, and God knows, that this matter is a confirmed fact for more than 2,000 years. It has been referred to over hundreds of years that the Arctic is a great continent divided into four regions containing gold, silver, and precious stones, and there are plants and animals in them that are strange and wondrous. The proof of this is the coast of Greenland. Every now and then, the remains of strange animals and the trunks of very giant trees that do not exist in this world are found there, and there is still great secrecy about it until now. The story of the North Pole was not strange in modern times, but rather was hidden until it was revealed for the first time to the media by US Admiral Richard Burt when he mentioned that there are large lands in the Arctic and Antarctica that are suitable for living during an interview with CBS. The Nazis also knew about it and established military bases there and it was the hidden reason for the first and second wars in a race for control on it and taking its wealth. But today the lie of energy is coming to us and the oil is running out, which is inexhaustible and almost free but the superpowers have taken everything under their ownership. In recent times, things have begun to be revealed to the public, not with the aim of enlightening minds, 
but rather in preparation for what is coming. In 2016, the agency responsible for monitoring it reported that the climate in the Arctic is that the temperatures there have become moderate and in some areas hot, through a report published on its own website in order to say that heat melts the chain of mountains surrounding each of the four islands that appeared on Mercator's maps. All of this is to prepare for something to come based on an imminent conflict that will occur due to the end of a secret agreement between the great powers that was based on dividing the legacies of the great continent. This is what happened in 2019 when Washington announced that it would intervene by force. The matter was necessary for the security and protection of the Arctic against Russian and Chinese power. The start date was literal in this conflict, months before the date of these documents, when American, Russian and Chinese battleships and fighters headed to control those lands and once again announced to the world what had been prepared years ago. The melting of the snow revealed the secret lands of the North that contain treasures that make all the people of the Earth extremely wealthy. These days, both Antarctica, or as it is known as the North Pole, and Antarctica, known to the public as Antarctica, are subject to very intense military protection, equipped with planes and fighters. It is strictly forbidden for any member of the public to enter the depths of those lands that contain within them the greatest secret of the earth. Thanks for watching and see you soon for a new topic. Do not forget to hit that subscription button to help us grow. Bye bye.